Well, now I want to turn to Tom uh, Farrell, who's going to be talking about scratch building his layout. And it is a wonderful, wonderful layout. Tom, welcome. Thank you again for having me. I have a uh, an interesting build this evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, this was, um, I was contacted from Facebook July 8th via private messenger to scratch build a uh, field hospital for a fellow ON30 modeler who's constructing a logging operation themed uh, layout. I don't normally do contract work, but this was a special case. This was for the memory of his autistic son who has recently passed away. And his son really liked logging and wanted this whimsical field hospital scene. So I agreed to take on the project. And uh, it took me about three days. I mean, I just shipped it today. It took me three three or four days, I guess, of work to make this structure. So uh, let me um, let me start here. So this is Dr. I'm a Butcher Field Hospital. So just whistle. I think it's okay. General surgery, amputations, teeth extracted, headache powders, lin liniments, and elixirs. This is the finished structure, and I'll show you how I made it. And there's our good surgeon. I started the project, as all my projects, with a piece of plywood and a, a sketch. Um, I wound up not putting in the outhouse, but... Um, these are skids. It's a logging operation, so they drag the hospital around where they're logging. Um, in this case, it's semi-permanent, as you'll as you'll see later. So the first thing I did is take twelve by twelves, and I, uh, with a razor saw, I scored them to get a wood grain, and then with a pair of channel locks, I crushed the ends. It's a foot and three and a half inches wide, just to put it in perspective. So then I um, put the flooring on. These are two by sixes. And I stained them with um, actually driftwood. I didn't use the medium brown here, just the driftwood. It's a nice effect. <clears throat> then I built up a frame with uh, four by fours, scale four by fours. I just, first I built these two sides and then I built these ends. This is a tent frame. Then I asked my wife for a pillowcase that she didn't want anymore. And I began cutting it into little pieces and I super glued it onto the front of this uh, structure I built. And then with a uh, very thin super glue, I kind of soaked it a little bit, made it really stiff. And I did that for the whole model. And then I went back with a fingernail file and filed all this, all these fuzzies and all this stuff off. So I had a relatively smooth corners. And then I coated it with this polyscale dust, which gave me a took the white pillowcase and sort of gave it an off-white weathered look about it. It also helped seal the thing up, gave it a little stiffness. The next up, um, again, with the two by sixes, I stained them with that uh, medium brown and light brown and just randomly put them on the perimeter of the tent. So the tent's semi-permanent. Then I took a um, grant line door and just glued it on there. L later, I I pulled this board off and this board off, and I put a frame around this little oversight by me. Then I went out to the front yard and got some sticks that looked approximately uh, six inches in diameter. And I cut them to make this frame for the rain fly. I put the other one in over here, here, and then with that same wood, I began, I thought, you know, I've never constructed a fence with, uh, quote, real wood, so I thought I'd make it really rustic. After all, we are on a 
logging operation. So basically they drag this thing around. Yeah, is the theory. And then for the rain fly, I uh, constructed this frame, um, put a two by six across that. Here's that frame I had to add later. It's all very rough. You know, it was, fun. It was a fun build because it was not precise. And then I put the, the rain fly on and I wanted it a different color. When I was a Boy Scout, our tents were this this greenish color. So I mixed this with white and green and came up with this and stained it with uh, blue gray stain and came off as a pretty effective rain fly. And I thought as a little twist, as you'll see, um, one of the ties have come loose and the corners blown off. You'll, you'll see how that looks here in a minute. And then I thought I'd put in another fence in a graveyard. Um, and I'll get to what I call the graveyard in a moment. But uh, so I just wanted a really random, chunky fence. Basically, they just slap together. These are 3D printed. I had these left over from a previous project. <clears throat> then I, with Elmer's glue, I painted the whole substrate here and I sprinkled uh, first a brown ground cover, then I sprinkled it with green, then I sprinkled a stone pathway in here, and then I soaked everything with Woodland Scenics cement. That's always my technique, paint everything with 100% undiluted Elmer's glue, sprinkle down whatever materials I want that I'm using, and then I soak it with the Woodland Scenics cement. It dries uh, flat, it dries it adheres very well to just about any surface. So this is looking down. Uh, <clears throat> these are the grave. The idea was to show that they were freshly, uh, fresh, fresh burials and uh, great staff. Little tent flap that's blowing in the wind because it's become untied. And we jump right to the finish finished model. I um, put these ties down. They're just super glued, uh, very fine screen uh, string. These are uh, Art Deco uh, plaster castings. I just painted them up. These are uh, old flooring towel. Um, that old flooring towel. I just use this for walls and stones. I made two steps here. I inserted a two by eight here, here and here. I thought this was too great of a span. Um, I bloodied the good doctor up. And um, we thought a little whimsical. There's my fence. There's the graveyard. I added another cross. There's looking down, there's the tree I put in. That's um, a super tree where you just spray it with um, an adhesive. And then I sprinkled fall colors on there um, from Woodland Scenics. I put in a barrel here, a water barrel. And um, that's that tree. They do a pretty reasonable job. I don't know if you've ever used the super trees. They provide a nice framework. I trimmed it with scissors and sort of shaped it. Then I put some, made it the fall scene. So I put some uh, leaves, quote unquote, on the ground. There's a close up of the tree. I mean, it's not perfect, but it works here. I did spray everything with um, doll coat, which is my trademark. Everything I do always gets sprayed with doll coat. Everything. The signs, the fences, the trees, this, everything. There's a close-up of the strings. They're just super glued on there. And then I go back and I paint so you can't tell that they're 
they look like they're woven into the rain fly. There's another over, over overall view of it. It's a nice little scene and it can drop right into a layout. Um, another close up. It looks quite rustic. I don't really like to do work like this because when I give something away, it's like giving away a child. <laughs> I just, I don't do contract work, but I made an exception. I went back and I added uh, a couple signs to this graveyard. I just thought it would, I asked him what period he models. He said the 1940s. So I looked up, um, 1940 advertisements on Google. I printed some out and just um, cut them out, stained the backside with a brownish color, and then I um, painted the back with pure Elmer's glue, stuck them on there, and then I painted them with um, the fronts with um, a paintable dull coat to seal everything up because I had already sprayed the whole thing with doll coat. I didn't want to hit it again. There's my graveyard. This is dry now. You can see the stone walkway. This is the reverse side. I decided not to put the wood, the backside, not to put the wood across the back. I wanted to show the uh, tent. And there's the back of the sign and the back of the fence. Uh, this looks quite good. I'm not sure if I like that tree or not, but uh, this this looks very interesting. I'm going to use this fence. This first time I ever did a fence like this, or use any real wood like this. I'm going to do this again on my layout. Somewhere I'm going to put a fence like that. I think it looks cool. So overall, again. And that's that's basically it. Yeah. Any uh, questions? Anybody have any questions for Tom? How in the world did you package that for shipment? I put it in a plastic bag. Then I put um, bubble wrap underneath it. And then I put um, crunched paper all around... Uh, the size top and um, put it in a, uh, a U.S. Postal Service. Um, I forget what they call it. I got one nearby, but no, it it, it didn't shake when I, I shook it. It wouldn't. It didn't move around. So it uh, it'll arrive just fine. Yeah, eighteen dollars to California. <laughs> That's Great on. Job, Tom. Thank you so very much. All right.